five, four, three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. Commander Butch Wilmer there calling down to Mission Control here in Houston that the spacecraft has begun rolling into the right attitude for its ascent and the guidance, navigation, and control officer here in the room seeing good data on that. Starfleet passing through Max Q or the uh, point of maximum dynamic dynamic pressure where the forces of air friction are highest, which in Sunny will shortly be passing through Mach 1 for the speed of sound. Starliner and Atlas looking good with speeds and attitude increasing as expected. Coming up in less than 20 seconds, the solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. Good SRB burnout. Good SRB. Now that the fuel in the solid rocket boosters has been depleted, the Atlas main booster stage will be continuing its burn for about the next three minutes. Good handle. Good handle. That, that call, good handle, from Capcom Joshua Kutrick, indicating that the crew now has the ability to initiate an abort manually if needed. All looking good so far. Now two minutes into uh, Starliner's flight and coming up on the solid rocket booster jettison at the two minute and 40 second mark. CLG in that good trajectory. CLG. The solid rocket boosters have now been jettisoned after seeing Starliner through its first 90 seconds of flight. Team on the ground here confirming that it was a good jettison and that the vehicle's trajectory continues to look good. Now uh, three minutes into today's flight. We are watching Boeing Starliner spacecraft making what is Boeing's first crewed test flight ever. Uh, about a minute and a half in, almost two minutes in. It looks like smooth sailing so far. I want to go to astrophysicist Hakeem Halusei and our own Gio Benitez, who's there at the Kennedy Space Center. Gio, it looked like a smooth takeoff from here. What's it like there right now? Uh, a lot of excitement, as you can imagine, because people have been waiting on this for years, quite literally four years, because that's how long this program has been delayed. And now it is up in the air. It is getting up there to space and going to the International Space Station. The next big moment is coming up here at just about 429 uh, into this flight. That's the booster engine cut off. And that's when you have the booster separation. So that's when they're really sailing. Uh, but this was a gorgeous launch. It was quite literally a perfect launch. Uh, the skies are nice and clear, which is everything you want to look for, and we saw it just sail away. So it is very much on its way right now, and we're told that everything is looking very, very good, Diane. Hey, Kim, what do you watch for in a launch like this? And anything stick out to you about this one? Well, you know, this is a huge rocket. This is a big, complex machine, and there's so many ways that things can go wrong. And if you look at the development, right, things have gone wrong. One of them, for example, was something as simple as recognizing that the tape that was wrapped around wires, the insulation of wires, was flammable. And, you know, there's so many individual points of failure from takeoff to launch to reentry. if it's that sort of vehicle. This one is not exactly that sort of vehicle. Um, 
So when things pull or go off without a hitch, and you look at the stages that led up to this, it just really gives me a lot of, um, you know, uh, appreciation for the engineering teams and how careful they are because it's really, really difficult and that's why, you know, there's always so many delays involved when bringing new technologies to fore. And, and Gio, there are two astronauts on board this flight. What can you tell us about them? Okay, I, I've been dying to tell you about this, Diane, and I have it ready. So, uh, Barry Wilmore, so Butch Wilmore, that's what we call him. He's the commander on this flight, longtime veteran uh, of the space industry, of NASA. He already has spent uh, 178 days in space, so they know space. Sonny Williams has actually spent uh, more time in space than him, 320, 20, 322 days on the International Space Station. She is the pilot on board, and again, she is now making history as the first female uh, to actually be on a test flight uh, for an orbital spacecraft. So, so that's a very, very big deal. We do have some fun stuff about her, though. Uh, Sunny Williams was the World News Tonight Person of the Week back in 2007 right here on ABC. So see, even then, we recognize her genius, right? She's a Boston Red Sox fan. Uh, when she was on orbit, she actually cut off her hair on orbit in the International Space Station to donate it to Locks of Love. Uh, so they are really special people. They are beloved loved here at NASA and uh, no doubt about it they are they're making history in a big way here Diane and uh, Hakeem how do you feel when you see a launch like this I mean to, that view of the earth gets me every time and I don't know the half of it compared to you how do you feel watching launch like this I feel like I wish I was on the launch that's how I feel you know I've had the ability in my research to send things into space, but not myself, right? And I can't imagine, I always think about what those people are feeling and thinking in that moment, because there has to be a lot of excitement and there has to be a lot of anxiety. The reality of sitting on that thing, knowing the accidents that have occurred in the past has to be in the back of their minds. But, you know, just like anything that's very difficult, you do your reps, you do your checks, you do it over and over and over again. And, you know, once they're in space, that is sort of the magic moments now where you get to view the sky like you've never seen it. Going to a dark sky location on Earth is spectacular. Imagine being in space and looking at space. Like, that's nuts. And a view of the Earth that you've never seen. And you get to go around the planet, you know, at a faster rate than, uh, you know, otherwise you'd be able to see the planet. So everything about it is just spectacular. But they have a job to do. So, you know, there has to be a balance between getting yourself together, doing your job, and enjoying the experience as you're going through it.